we're going to assess the condition of the armature and the field core windings. Uh, unfortunately I can't make a full assessment because uh, for the armature I need access to something called a growler uh, and uh, I don't have one. I've been trying to get hold of one but um, uh, unfortunately uh, there's not been one available. Um, also the other problem is, is that uh, to assess the condition of the um, uh, field core windings I need some data as to the resistance of them and uh, I haven't been able to find anything of that either. But nevertheless what I plan to do is to check to see if there are any shorts from the commutator to the laminations on the body of the uh, armature and I also want to check be from one commutator segment to the next to see if there are any open circuits or high resistances on the winding loops of the armature as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is to check the insulation between the uh, laminations here of the armature uh, and the commutator and I've set the um, ohm meter on uh, um, 0 to 200 kilo ohms range I've determined that this is the most appropriate for this particular um, armature so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, test the resistance between the armature lamination so the armature laminations and the commutator and um, I've got one here that I put a scratch on earlier, I don't know whether you can see that uh, so as I don't keep going round and round. So we just put the uh, black probe on the lamination and we're going to touch on the first one that's scratched. You can see I've got 44 uh, kilo ohms there and uh, we're just going to go around. There shouldn't be much difference and certainly if the, if the resistance um, drop severely then that indicates that there's an earth or a short sorry indicates that there's a short to earth you can see they're all pretty much the same So this is looking okay. I think I must have gone round it by now. Oh, there we go. Coming back up to the scratched one. There we are, back at the scratched one. So they're all pretty much the same and no problems there. Right, next thing I'm going to do is put the uh, um, the ohm meter on a low resistance range so I'm going to go on the 0 to 200 and I'm going to check for um, the uh, resistance between the commutator segments so if I get any 
strong variation here then that indicates a fault Let's go back to that. So we've got 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And there we are back at the one I scratched up. So no faults found there. Now the only other test I can do is on the field coils and all I can do on the, these field coils uh, is to check to see if there is a short between the field coils and the body and um, I'm gonna so I'm gonna use the highest resistance scale for this and see what it reads. So we got an extremely high resistance there, which is good. 1.3 mega ohms indicates that there's a very very high resistance um, between the body, between the field winding and the body of the start motor. So there's no short there. If I put it on the next scale down, which is the 0 to 200 kilo ohm scale, it doesn't even register, it just says it's open circuit. So nothing wrong there. Unfortunately, I can't test the resistance of the field winding coils uh, because I don't have any data for that. And uh, if there is a short just between uh, two of, uh, between two portions of winding in the um, um, field coils, it's n it's going to sh not going to show a significant difference, uh, but it will make a difference to the operation of the starter motor. So there could be an issue there with the field coils. Uh, there could be an issue with a short uh, on the armature go back to the armature again there could be but I can't che check for shorted um, um, shorts to earth on the armature without a growler uh, what I will do is put a growler up on the uh, or a link to a growler up on um, this video when I post it up on YouTube and um, that will show how a growler is used if you can get your hands on one. I found plenty of second hand ones for sale on uh, eBay USA 
uh, but only a couple of new ones for sale on eBay UK and uh, I don't really want to spend out best part of a hundred pound on a on, on a Bulgarian made of growler just to do this test uh, they do come up from time to time in fact I've been uh, I was chasing one uh, for a little while um, but um, unfortunately it uh, disappeared off eBay before I could make an offer okay well that's it as far as testing is concerned so it's just back to building up this starter motor now well that just about concludes all the tests I can do um, at this stage on this starter motor um, the armature tests that I did uh, the first one which was for testing the resistance between the um, armature laminations and the commutator um, turned out okay as did the test between adjacent commutator segments both of those didn't show anything untoward I'd also like to have tested for shortage shortage turns um, but that would mean using a growler and I just haven't been able to get hold of one I have tried so unfortunately um, we can't make any conclusive tests and another test that I should have carried out um, um, when I, before I took the starter motor out was to uh, check for current consumption under load and a voltage drop test which unfortunately I didn't do uh, because at the time I convinced myself that uh, it was the solenoid that was faulty which I think now is a mistake um, anyway um, the upshot is that uh, the starter motor is going to be replaced now so what I'm planning to do is now rebuild the starter motor and uh, then just leave it to one side on the bench uh, hopefully at some stage I might be able to get hold of a growler and if I can if I do then I'll put a um, an additional video up um, just to show uh, the, the growler test and see what that throws up so um, anyway on with the rebuild